So I should have been filming before this, but uh, I got a new vehicle and we've been driving it around. I've probably already driven it like 80 miles or something. To, no, not that, it feels like 80 miles. Um, we drove down to have dinner with Patrick and I'm gonna record people's <laughs> oh my god. No fucking way. You said a land cruiser, not a fucking piece of shit. Is this like a Hummer H2? What is this? No, this is a one. A H1? No, yeah, no, it's like a like Humvee. It's a military Humvee. one. Yes. Boy. <laughs> what? It, like on the diff. It has like axle brakes. Yep. Oh my god. On the diff itself. This is ridiculous. This is yeah. the craziest thing I've seen. What? Is this like, right? what is it called? Like Rhino liner? Yeah, it's like a bed liner thing. Is, do they come with the flakes in it? No. They, somebody added that custom. It's actually the coolest thing ever. What is this? Uh, an airbag sensor? For sure, right? No, these are infrared <laughs> lights. So it, it has, has infrared airbags. lights, infrared turn signals, it and has then... airbags, but they're only yeah. to be deployed if you're in water. So if you're driving like in a combat zone, oh, the radiator sits like this, like a V-mount. It's like a V-mount radiator? Yeah. Yeah, the trans cooler is the biggest thing I've ever seen. The radiator is as big as your car. This is the craziest thing is the Mustang was longer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Mustang's like a foot longer than this somehow. Lift. Look at this, look at this trans cooler. So the engine's kind of like half behind the cowl and sits back here. Uh, and then the whole drive chain is super high, uh, no so the step, people have to be. Just in case you were wondering, don't yeah, step on don't that. Don't step on that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you'd be okay on it. Just in case you were uh, trying to step up onto the roof. It's 140 horsepower, I think. This hood is bigger than my whole car. Yeah. Oh my god, this is. Hilarious. It's not a Land Cruiser, man. It's not a Land Cruiser. I was just misdirecting you, bro. This is yeah. like, this is like I, I could not see you walk even buying this, like, for real. Why? This is not something you would buy. Really? I, is it too logical? This is, what I this is a little too practical for you. You yeah. said, yeah, you said, like, this is an errand buy, but, hey, like, this is... I don't have to trailer this. This is beyond, like, an errand buy, <laughs> like an errand car. This is beyond that. It's okay, he wanted to ratchet strap me into the back seat. Yeah. <laughs> so... The back I seats feel like we do that, go like, like this, but we didn't want to take the door off, and we're going to cut this yeah, so that we could still run the doors on it we'd have with to the cut person out in here. This section so oh, the seat look, can drop in. It's, it's, yeah. It's a handheld reverse mirror. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about that little guy. It's a compact. There you go. We're just so we're just there. setting somebody up like that. Well, I have to go. Let me go grab a pizza box. <laughs> I didn't throw you. you, gave you a that was yeah, fine. You threw me. Okay. I expected you to do something to throw. My cup holder, please be the right. Yeah. Yeah. It fits. <laughs> so the vehicle is not the most practical. I think it gets maybe 10 to 12 miles per gallon of Milwaukee. I have no idea.
have a turbo, half of a turbo kit. Yeah. And I'm told that there's like no ECU for this and it's just mechanical injection. All you do is like bolt a turbo on and just drive. And you probably have to do something with the fuel, but there's not ECUs and stuff. It's just like literally just piping to get the exhaust into the turbo and the air from the turbo into the intake. And like that's kind of it. Maybe I could just do propane injection up hills. Yeah, that would work. So we're going to take this thing up to Colorado and go off-roading and we're checking the uh, amount of flex it has right now by we go uh, run it up a ramp. They have torsion diffs. Torsion diffs? Here. Let's see if. Hold that for a second. Let's do the test. Can we flip it over or is it pretty stable? It's pretty stable, man. That is not a lot of uh, flex, but it is a lot of um, stability, I guess you could say. So, kind of weird driving something without much flex. I've always had like rock crawlers that have tons and tons of flex. But I guess it is, like past my knees. Oh. Actually, that's not true because the rear tire has been up for like a foot. Yeah. So it's not much at all. But the cool thing about these vehicles, so the cool thing about these vehicles, well, there's a lot of cool things here. Let me turn off the vehicle real quick. Bunch of cool things about this thing. It has portal axles, which means the axle goes in way above the center line of the wheel. So the center line of the wheel is right there. So you get about four inches, like four to five inches of lift maybe just off of the portal axle. It has three something gears in there. So like three thirteens or something, I'm not sure. Um, and then it doubles it through this and they turn backwards and then it changes the direction of all that. <laughs> so very unique. It's independent suspension, which means there's no diff bump right here. The diff bump is way up there. Um, so it has a lot of ground clearance. So you can kind of get away without having a lot of articulation and stuff. And what really kind of blows me away is this thing is way smaller than you would think. We measured it next to a Mustang. The Mustang was longer today. Um, I don't know. They have the illusion of being huge and really heavy. Yeah, it is really wide. Like over six foot, like six and a half, seven foot wide, maybe. Yeah, but like my Jeep is that as well. This just has body over it. And um, well, the problem is not the body. The problem yeah. is the body here. <laughs> yeah, the body there is going to be a problem. That's the problem. But it's not a super expensive vehicle, so if we beat it up some, that doesn't bug me at all. Uh, some other really cool things about these things that I did not know is you would think these things are crazy, crazy heavy because we've always kind of thought that, especially with like the up armor ones and stuff, which are like 14,000 pounds, supposedly. This is right at 5,200, supposedly. Um, it's a fiberglass hood. The fiberglass hoods are really cheap online. They're like 160 bucks or 120 bucks. Um, and the body is pretty much all aluminum. So all of these pieces are aluminum and really, really light. I don't know about if this piece is in particular, but like most of the body supposedly is aluminum. That's what I've been told. I haven't put a magnet to it, although I could. Um, it has a bunch of really weird pieces. Like supposedly you can stuff a piece of rebar through this and then just wrap a rope around it back and forth. And then you can drive forward. So you do that, you put it to a tree and then back to the other side, and then you just put it in drive or reverse, and then it will pull itself backwards into the tree. Does that make sense? It sounds weird, it's a but yeah, I know, but it's, it's really interesting to think about. We should actually go make that a video and go do that. Um, Let's wait until we need it and we don't know how, and then we'll try it and fail. That's how everything goes as you learn on the job. Um, what else? These things do have cool central tire inflation systems. This one does not. That's in the much more expensive ones, but it allows you to change the air pressure in the tires as you go. Um, has a 25 gallon tank, I think, which is probably pretty good because it probably gets really, really bad mileage. Um, what else? These are the seats, they're not super comfortable, uh, but they do have a ton of different seat options. Um, all of these pieces I learned, these things are all modular, so they're all basically the exact same chassis. Uh, but they do come with a couple different engine configurations. And then 
you can get different doors, different tops, different everything, and it all mix and like mixes and matches. So you can, if this is a pickup truck one, you can just change out these door pieces with a couple bolts and put a normal door on there and another like roll bar hoop kind of pillar and then a different roof. You can make it a huge ambulance one. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, this one is in like the pickup configuration with a soft top right here and then a back window and then I do have doors for it and then they supposedly have like an arctic version where you can get insulation for this um we haven't figured out if like there's a heater yet I don't think there is I think it's just a blower motor which is really weird and kind of unfortunate I saw heater core lines but uh we'll f we'll figure it out I hope true is right yeah they were because he's smarter than me and then like they have some videos maybe I'll include of do driving underwater snorkel kind of thing right here it's an air intake so you can get up to about here probably somewhere with the water and then they have attachments so you just pop this off and put one you know this high or however high I've seen them like 10 feet tall or 20 feet tall that was absolutely hilarious um, and it's just a really old antiquated three speed diesel that makes no power but it's cool and it's amazing how many people are like the children all were looking at it at dinner everybody like stops and looks at it it's weird that this like vehicle gets so much attention because everybody's had to have seen a hummer do you agree but like yeah, you just never really see them in person like driving around yeah which is weird because they're pretty cheap now and this one is street legal so hopefully i don't get pulled over and go to jail i don't know that's unlikely with how slow we'll be going. They'll pull us over for obstructing like traffic. Or for no in the back. Yeah. Ooh, you know what? With the 40s, I am gonna be able to do the wall trick. Look at that. The tires okay. almost do stick out further than the bumper. Maybe just cause it's turned. We'll figure that out. There's videos of people driving them straight up walls too, which is really cool. The whole point of this vehicle is every year we do like a Lone Star Drift Adventure Channel type thing and we go up to Colorado. We haven't always uh, recorded them, but the point of the original one was to go buy like a $3,000 vehicle, fly up to even pick it up or get it in Texas. So we always go to Denver, Colorado Springs. So you missed the first target. <sighs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, um, okay, so number three. <laughs> we would fly. So I was really good for the first few, but Land Cruisers got too expensive. So I bought eight Land Cruisers. But I only, was only ever in like three of them, but yeah. Yeah, but two or three for the actual like Colorado trip. The last one got um, pretty serious with like uh, lockers, lockers and gears. And gears and, yeah. Well, it came with lockers, well, yeah. but they were all fantastic. They really didn't break except one awful time. But the point was, is a bunch of people, Trevor from Ocean Auto and some other cool people um, would meet up with us and then we'd all go off-roading, camping, do different things. We have our favorite trail up at Hackett and Chinaman, yeah, yeah. And a bunch of really, really beautiful places. It's just a nice place to get away because the summer's so hot. And then the, the point of the trip was always, not the whole point, but we would buy something, we'd go have a ton of fun in it, like have a bonding experience between all the guys in Lone Star Drift and all the drivers. It's basically a comedy routine. Yes, it is a comedy routine as well. Um, but like plane tickets are 50 bucks up to Colorado Springs. Everyone would just fly up. Some of us would be there for a few days. Some of us would be there for a month. And um, that, uh, that spot we got, I don't remember where it was. Anyway, we got a uh, bed and breakfast that had like a river oh yeah that place that was, was amazing not bed and breakfast but a, a that was where was that that was south of Sa salida buena salida, vista yeah anyway ah, really cool yeah. place that was a snow trip and like it was nuts there oh was a, yeah and you, that was salida yeah, there was a stream buena coming vista. through the middle of the whole place and like you had to walk across the stream yeah. to go to the bedrooms so we do it in summer and winter sometimes but the point is is like we would then sell the vehicles and get out of it and it's totally different with drifting because drifting we're consuming so many things tires race car parts and everything else typically the off-road vehicles don't break on us and we don't try to break them and stuff um unless, unless you do some. yeah and sometimes they've been really like also comfortable all the land cruisers i had were really comfortable i'm not doing that this time kevin's this is super jeep. uncomfortable yeah kevin's jeep but i've all i've lived through like the k-van thing i drove a k-van a thousand miles 
So I am planning to drive this thing all the way up to Colorado from Fort Worth, Texas, which is right next to Dallas, if you don't know where that is. And we will see how it works. I do have some giant tires. I'll roll those in front of it in a minute. I have some 40s for it. The 40s, oddly enough, are hopefully to keep the bottom of the vehicle higher up so I don't destroy the undercarriage. But also, because it's gear limited, it's a three speed, I can't go very fast. So this comedy routine has to actually get up there. And I think it'll only do about 55 comfortably. I can get it up to about 60, but it's not happy because of gearing. It literally says over speed above 55. Oh, Here. well. It doesn't, I don't know if it's something else. I drove that point, the train, I drove but. the 0.6 liter K van at Redline for 18 hours or whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm sure this thing will Sounds be like more reliable. It has a cup holder for my iced tea. I have to turn this thing into a vehicle I can drive a thousand miles. Oh, this is gonna be brutal. You're gonna put doors on it. That's all you're gonna do. No, I do have. That is probably all. <laughs> That's I'm gonna all do. you're gonna. You're gonna do that. And the doors are gonna. No, I already have it planned out. I'm gonna have headphones, like earphones, it's multiple versions. Well, earplugs maybe, but I need an audio book to get up there, and we'll see. I'll try to entertain everybody. I hope it works really well off road, but uh, I mean, like you would think it would work really well off road. I mean, but I, it has to be not. It has to be not bouncy. Is. So certain things like that with the 40s on it. Hopefully, we can. These are notoriously stiff tires, and they have a huge like um, ring inside them, like a piece PVC ring or something. So they run flats and they run a lot of pressure and everything and they're very stiff sidewalls. And there's not really much suspension wise on this. It's just like what, what you get. Yeah. Is. So hopefully we can make it bearable off road. We'll see. Maybe I'll sell it. But it was. Oh, this is also the money out of for this thing came out of my Land Cruiser fund. So when I sell the Land Cruisers, I put all the money into a envelope and then I don't feel so like guilty when I go to buy another off-road vehicle because it's kind of like the exact same off-road money from four Land Cruisers ago. Get a little bit of this. Come check out my thumb versus the size of this spring here. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it is. That's probably that's probably an inch thick spring. Like, it's serious. My teeth literally hurt thinking of this. Yeah, this is gonna be reliable if I do it. This is one of the few vehicles True will not get in for a long trip. <laughs> is that accurate? Uh, no, I don't do long trips in any of the vehicles. I always fly yeah. out. <laughs> he drives like a newer M3, and if he drives over like an hour, he complains his legs hurt. Is that accurate? No, it's that I fall asleep. Oh, your your knees hurt. No, not in this one. You're spoiled. No. I've never showed you guys this M3. I should show that to you. Um, it's that I can't stay awake for long drives. So yeah, but this kind of brings me back. I used to drive between Colorado and San Antonio all the time, and um, it was like in my Jeep and like doors off and stuff sometimes. I mean, I can deal with it. Hopefully. We'll see. I can also trailer it up there. But the main problem with this thing is going to be... Oh my God, it has a cup holder in the back. <laughs> that doesn't seem useful. Doesn't seem useful. But I need to figure out a storage system since it doesn't have any locks or anything on the vehicle. Um, I need to figure out how to make it ride a little bit better. It actually rides really well. But off road, you need it to ride really soft. And that's probably just going to be in the tire selection with those 40s and low pressures. You can just change out those inch thick springs. Easy. Where do we get Hummer springs? On the surplus. They probably have softer ride springs. I bet they only get harder. <laughs> I bet they do. Yeah. Okay. Look, the it's so cute how kids all want to sit in it. <laughs> like, yeah. Hi. It's okay. It's okay, little girl. It's, it's okay, little guy. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Don't worry. But yeah, kids love this thing. It's so wide, it doesn't even look like it's... How far do we take it? I don't even know. I don't know, man. It doesn't look like you're very like far over, but you're pretty far over. There's no way we're flipping this thing back, so maybe we don't. <laughs> Hold on, let me check it. It feels super stable. Yeah, you're still down here. Okay, right? Probably gonna drive down soon. Yeah, you should probably drive down then. Oh uh, yeah. There's there's flat. Whoa! <laughs> you just exactly missed catching like the entire. 
You're already hitting sliders before you even go off-roading. How far can I back up? Uh, just go straight back and you're good. Do you need to hit it? Uh, just a little bit of paint damage is fine. It was incredible before. So it's always fun to get the first little scrape out of the way. And this thing is really tough. It's aluminum, which is cool. And when all we did was scuff up with that much of a hit, it didn't do any actual damage. It just scuffed the uh, the Rhino liner, which is hilarious. Um, I guess we don't have to worry about rust or anything. We will cover that back up, but it's just fun to like, um, we are gonna dance. Like, I'm not just being, well, no, I am just being an idiot and like running into stuff with this, but we're gonna be pretty rough with them camping and off-roading and everything. Um, and that's what we built, like bought this thing for. So expect to get some dents. If that makes you angry that I'm just beating on something, this thing was not very expensive. So yeah, it's gonna get beat on. Um, but I'm super excited. So these are the stock wheels and tires. They're a 16.5 inch military wheel um, with a beadlock and this weird thing, which is really cool. Oh, I might actually get to keep that with a new wheel. Although with a new wheel and a different offset, the whole mechanism isn't gonna work. Sorry, anymore, I don't think. Um, but it's a 37 inch tire and they're really old tires. Um, like the whole design of this tire and everything, it's just really old tire technology. So I'm swapping over to a newer tire that's hopefully gonna have a more flexible sidewall and be more comfortable. And it's gonna hopefully be taller, which is obviously is. I ordered these, so that's a 37, and this is a 40 inch. So that's about the size difference. Scoot it away a little bit, True. There we go. So you can see a, the size difference is not humongous, but it's pretty substantial. Um, I'm hoping that it doesn't make it too slow on the road, but that it gives me a little bit more gearing advantage so I'm not on a red line kind of thing constantly. Although it's gonna be kind of difficult probably driving up the hills in Colorado with those. So it's gonna be a give or take. But I'm super excited. I need to go find some eight lug uh, by six and a half inch wheels. And that is also gonna give us a bit more ground clearance. I don't expect to actually lift it all, but I am gonna buy some spring spacers just in case. I wanna put some spring spacers up there. It's gonna lift it maybe two inches, I think. And then if I don't lift it, all I have to do, I watched a uh, really good Motor Trend Dirt Every Day episode. Those hosts are so much fun to watch and stuff. And they worked on one of these. I, I would really like to keep the overall look of the front end because it's, you know, very, it's a Hummer. You want to see what it looks like kind of thing. Although I can always get another hood because they're crazy cheap. But if you just cut this right along there, I don't have to lift it whatsoever by the body or suspension and I get all the lift out of the tires um, and everything still functions and you have completely OEM suspension geometry. You're not stretching CV joints. You're not doing anything. That would be probably ideal to cut that, but I kind of feel like a jerk cutting it. With a 40 on the front, I think we're gonna perfectly be able to run into a wall and drive straight up a wall. That's kind of something I wanna to do too. Although with my Jeep, I've already been able to do that forever, but for some reason with an Hummer, it's a lot more hilarious to do. This tire, we're gonna gain, the big, the big goal is to gain at least two inches of ground clearance here. Um, so the, the ground will be, or the, the bottom of the vehicle will be right here. And then if we lifted it by a bit of suspension, it'd be right about there. And that'll give us enough room to kind of get over stuff because these things are pretty low from the factory, which makes them really not feel like they're gonna fall over ever, which is cool. But there's some weird things like this gas tank is plastic and it's very exposed down here and there's no skid plates for anything. Oh my God. I did not see that oil pan. I might need to address that. Holy cow. How is that thing still functional? Uh, I, maybe I just ignore that right now. That thing looks so, oh my God. I bet it's easy to change though. All right, I'm gonna look at that when I'm not on camera. There's so many cool like military things. Like if you look at this, there's some hoses and stuff in there and maybe some wire and it's uh, protected from stuff. Kind of neat. Um, and before we go on the trip, I'm gonna go over the vehicle on the underside and just make sure everything's tight and make sure everything is full of fluids correctly. It looks like the transfer case is leaking. So we'll just need to make sure it's full of fluid 
and ignore it maybe and just check on it. Um, and look at how much ground clearance it has. Again, a normal vehicle would have an axle coming out right at center line and then a diff that comes down significantly right there and then back over. And instead of that, we have an independent suspension, which everybody normally hates on off-road vehicles, but it comes way up and the diff is way up there. So I'm, I mean, like I could put a paint bucket down here, probably more than a paint bucket and drive over a paint bucket, which is cool. And with the forties, it'll be even higher. So our Lone Star Drift Adventure Club is open to everybody. Um, typically we mostly take drivers and their friends. Oh man, what are they doing with the car in there? I'm at the shop, so it's kind of loud. Um, but we do take drivers and their friends and stuff. It's open to everybody. It's gonna be in Colorado. It's gonna be basically a few days after round two, which is coming, no, round five at uh, Gulf Greyhound Park, which is this weekend coming up. Not this weekend, but like in seven days or whatever. Oh, six days. Man, I gotta leave in just a couple days and I have a new toy I wanna play with. It's open to everybody. You can go to the Lone Star Drift event page and maybe see it. Uh, if you're in Colorado, you can jump in and like go have lunch with us somewhere. It's not a super serious trip where we're gonna be in specific places or anything at specific times, like we wanna be, but we're on vacation. So we're not adhering to an exact place or time or anything. It's a very loose group of people that uh, whatever. And like, I'm gonna be driving this. So like, I'm not gonna be on time to anything. And maybe if you wanna come help out with it and you're in the area, come help me make this thing work. Okay, bye everybody. Welcome to the world of me trying to fix things as cheaply as possible on the military vehicle. So problem one, well, this isn't the only problem, but this mirror, it sits there and jiggles. It's not really doing it right now. Anyways, it makes an awful jiggling as it does it. It slides back and forth too. Yeah. So I'm going to do, I don't have any silicone. I was doing, oh my God, I'm so bad at this camera thing. I just chewed some gum and I'm going to try to put gum on this. Two pieces, give it a minute to settle. And I'm hoping a piece right there and a piece right there is going to fix this.